Aaron is a 15-year-old with ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and ODD, which is Oppositional Defiant Disorder. These conditions were diagnosed in primary school and have led to challenging behavior and even violent outbursts in lessons. Over the last five years, there have been many occasions where he's been on the brink of permanent exclusion. Right, Aaron, stay focused, mister. Good lad. It's massively important. I feel without their support, and if they would have basically just put him down as a, a naughty, naughty, disruptive child, if they hadn't seen the potential that Aaron does have to offer, I feel that he basically would be possibly in prison now. The support Aaron's received has come from the school's learning mentor, a behaviour management scheme, other outside agencies, and also a strong relationship that has evolved between Aaron, his single parent mother, and many of the teaching and support staff at his school. I have hope back. That's all I can say. And it's thanks to the teachers. <laughs> At Turves Green Boys School in South Birmingham, there are 660 pupils, of which 20% are on the special needs register. The school has a team of learning mentors led by Sally Spencer. She liaises with teaching staff and outside agencies to provide individually tailored support for each EBD pupil. I'm there to sort of support and nurture them into their sort of correct wavelength of thinking that let's not choose this behaviour, we can see how this escalates, we can see how this becomes more confrontational, and do you really want that? Sally has counselled Aaron since he started at this school, and he himself can now reflect on his improved behaviour. Uh, if it was in your seven, I'd just swear about it, and I'd get me suspended, then my mum would get upset, and yes. it just goes trouble at home. We'd have everything that. escalating yeah. again then for you, wouldn't we, at home, yeah? yeah. You hit the nail on the head there, Aaron, because yeah. you have learnt to not only control yourself, but the staff have been able to gain a note more of understanding, yeah. don't they? Excellent, OK. A subject Aaron has progressed well in is English. Aaron, what is the second question about? We're able to do this because people like you support our work. That's an opinion. Right, well done. Claire has taught Aaron since year eight, um, and as with many EBD children, it takes time to build up trust. Right. He participates well in class discussions. And it costs money for a doctor over there. If he does occasionally um, shout out an answer because he is so positive, I'm always very, very um, positive to him and just say that is absolutely excellent and perhaps sometimes give him a reminder that he shouldn't shout out, but his attitude is, is excellent. She understands like, how, how I react. She's giving me mm -hmm. more how and she's like, gave me extra lessons uh, after school. Isn't it? Brilliant. And, it's, and she's just posted things with the post, helping me to get a higher grade because she knows I can do it. Aaron, you would get one to two marks for that. OK, so out of three, so that is great. I think in myself that I can't do nothing. I, I won't be able to pass. And I needed to like, teach us to like, boost my confidence up, and that's what my spare man does. Keeping up Aaron's confidence can be challenging for his teachers, so Sally has sought out different types of support from outside agencies. One of the first was an intensive three-week behaviour management programme held at another secondary school in Birmingham called FLIP. You are really getting on my nerves. <laughs> That's body language, isn't it? FLIP stands for Flexible Learning Individual Pathways. Uh, it's designed to keep the student in mainstream schooling. We helped Aaron with techniques to allow him to have a better pathway through the school. You've had a bad day on the way to school. You want to transmit to the teacher, you're not having a good day. Slam the door, <laughs> oh, sir, and we'll go and sit down. The common problem is the lesson can move too quickly. One of the solutions can be that he has a TA with him that can explain that for him, or he can have a, 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 a timeout card where he can just put the, stick the timeout card up and ask the um, teacher to if he can leave the lesson. Hi Aaron, what's up mate? If we can get the pupil to realise that things are starting to go wrong, then by using the timeout card, they don't get the flashpoint in the classroom. Did you show your card properly, yeah? Yep. Yeah, so the teacher's aware that you've come down to me? Yep. 
Right. And staff are aware of that, and they know that if somebody holds up that kind of card, they need to let them go. They know that they will go to the right place and not just be wandering around. I'm going to let you sit here and cool down a sec. No. I'm going to go up and just double check with the teacher, OK? No. Many EBD children have a lot of energy and short attention spans. One of the effective ways of keeping them in mainstream school is by taking them out. Yeah. Ash and I will be giving you a map. You will also get a compass. The idea for the compass is to give you a bit of trust in the compass. Skillforce is a nationwide scheme delivering inspirational and motivational activities to around 8,000 young people a year. It's aimed at 14 to 16 year olds, many of whom have serious behavior, self-esteem, learning and social problems. The main thing is they are individuals. And I don't like the term special education needs. Uh, in my opinion, the students, they're special and they all have needs. So it just has some have more needs than others. So we deal with them on an individual basis. The scale on here is a 500 metre, yeah. all right? So if you want to find the distance between that corner there and that junction there, how many, how many sections is it? Three. Three sections, so it's 300 metres. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right, go on. Okay. If they hadn't have had that kind of support and that different approach uh, for one day a week, would most probably end up most probably being excluded because their behaviour in classrooms would not be good, uh, or they wouldn't not be attending because they'd be voting with their feet. If you're always indoors, you'll feel more stressed. When you're outdoors, you feel more Calm relaxed and relaxed. And everything. I just think it helps me. It gets me out of the classroom. If I was in the classroom now, I'd be messing about. They know that if they mess around in school, then one of the first things they're going to lose is the opportunity to come on the next skill force trip. So obviously we're working in liaison with the school all the time. That's the north side. Right? So the if they play up, they don't go anywhere. But when they do go out, they go out as part of an activity, as part, as part of a task that we've set them, and they've got to write about it. It's all part of the key skills. Come on, Dave! Their biggest problem is lack of confidence, and uh, my main role with these is motivating them to want to learn. Good lad. Aaron is clearly very relaxed with the skill force instructors, many of whom are ex-forces. The gains he's made over the last year have been fantastic. It's the way you communicate with them. You're not talking at them, you're talking with them. You're bringing them into your world. The way they respond to it all is a very positive way. And Aaron's advice to teachers on how to deal with other children like him? They shouldn't just like notice the bad people just say they've done something good. The teachers should just say, oh, you've done good, and praise them. Or just call them back after the lesson and just say, oh, you've done good in this lesson. And it'll just say for being bad, just say, oh, you've called them back at the end. And just say, oh, you've been bad at this lesson. Can you join in, brief? Aaron's self-awareness has really helped him control his outbursts in class during the last year. But with ADHD, schools learn to expect the unexpected. Pupils with EBD, they can flare off. We, uh, we need a lot of flexibility to be able to work with them. Hence the fact myself and the other support staff within the school, we don't have a rigid timetable. As we were filming this programme, Aaron became involved in an incident during his maths lesson. He sought out his learning mentor, Sally, interrupting our interview. And Aaron being an individual was needing some... Sorry, I'm aware of Sorry, of Aaron's... English lesson, it's quite a maths lesson. And I said to Mr... I, I went down to that had his support and just said I don't want to be in lessons so about like nothing. And then Mr O'Brien came in the lesson and said, uh, where have you seen And I said, I don't want to be in this lesson. Basically, there, there was an incident that uh, led to Aaron refusing to stay in his maths classroom. Uh, unfortunately, when I went to talk to Aaron about this, he did lose his temper. All is like, it's like your choice to say, like what lesson you want to go in. And I was just turned around and said, oh, yeah, at the end of the day, is there, oh, I don't learn nothing after the teachers, or I don't learn nothing. What I want for Aaron is for Aaron to be comfortable in the classroom and to succeed. But I also want the staff to, to know that they're going to be supported. And if Aaron has difficulties, that we're able to take Aaron away from those difficulties, resolve the issues and then as soon as possible get him back into class. I don't know nothing, Kathleen. And then he goes, I'll have to have a meeting with your mum. Aaron was suspended and a meeting arranged with his mother for later that afternoon. 
the first time this year there has been an incident of this nature. Last year quite a few incidences but the year before even more so it is getting better and I do have to look at the whole picture really. Um, they're becoming far more isolated. Um, Aaron is being honest and upfront about it um, but at the end of the day the issues do need to be addressed and Aaron's behaviour basically um, won't be tolerated. Aaron got himself very upset yeah. and what started off as quite a small thing actually then became in the end yeah. you know, a fairly big yeah. issue. He actually it's said some fun. things that weren't very nice. Yeah. He stormed off in quite a temper. To his credit, you know, he came back to see me at lunchtime and he's apologised for swearing and does realise that, you know, he shouldn't have reacted mm. in that way. He wasn't made to come and see you, I didn't know mm. until you've just told me. Go on. Um, That's good. So fair dues to him in that respect. Mm. Yeah. However, he knows he, himself this is his last year That's right. and he does need to pull his belt in mm. and really start um, working. Okay. Thank you for seeing right. this afternoon. Okay, alright, thank you. Children have got conditions, you know, as Aaron has, you know, with his EBD. Uh, you, know, you know, he he will sometimes make mountains out of molehills. When he's had time for reflection, he will be very apologetic for what, what has happened, which is brilliant because two, three years ago, Aaron just wouldn't have done that at all. He wouldn't have accepted that he was in the wrong at all. And in that way, we've seen a great move forward with Aaron. And we're happy for Aaron to come back tomorrow, understanding that the procedures are still there and he will follow the procedures. It's this close relationship and trust between Aaron's mother and the school that's provided the foundation on which Aaron can build. If a child comes in misbehaving that day, do not turn around and say, there's a, there's a problem, he's just being naughty and whatever. Find out why, ask questions, because at the end of the day, you can actually do something for that child, you can build them up and you can believe in them. Aaron means a lot to you, doesn't he? He does. Tell me. Um, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've managed to work um, really closely with Aaron from year seven. And it's, it's been fantastic. It's just an enormous bonus to see Aaron mature into a fine young man because he will make it. He will be great, he'll get there. I've worked extremely hard with my child. The school have worked extremely hard. And I know for a fact, because of the school's input and my support for the school, Aaron is going to make something of himself. And I would like you to come back in three or four years' time and you'll see the benefits from it.